All right, little June bugs. We're about to play a game. It's called What Method Am I Going to Use to Factor This Expression? Now, there's five different ki kinds of factoring we have learned about. Greatest common factor, difference of squares, quadratic, special quadratic, and grouping. And we have to figure out, looking at the expression over here, which method we're going to use. Well, there's two things we should ask ourselves before starting any factor question. What kind of factoring am I going to use? And how do I know to use that kind of method? Well, looking at this guy, mm, I'm considering, I'm considering, and I figured out, yeah, that's right. This is a GCF question, okay? That's always the king. That's always the first thing I look for. And how do I know what's common greatest common factor? Well, they both have a common factor of x. And that's not all. 8 has 4 as a factor. So they also have another common factor. So the kind of factoring I'm going to use here is GCF, and I know that because it is the king of all factoring. I'm going to give him a little king's hat. Bam! How did I know that? It's a common factor. A uh, duh. Okay. So how do we factor this expression? Well, we pull out the common factors. 8 and 4 have a common factor of 4, so that comes out. They also have a common factor of x, so that comes out. Now, what comes we put in the, in the parentheses, it's what's ever left, okay? So when I factor out a 4, there's 2 left here. And when I factor out an x, there's a y. When I factor out a 4x from here, is there nothing that goes here? No, that would be incorrect. What is left is a 1, okay? When I pull everything out, I need this to be 1, because when I multiply back, I should get a 4x, right? So your final expression will be 4x, oh, it should be just 4x times 2y minus 1. All right, that's how we do greatest common factor. Remember, that's the first one you always look for. The second one, let's take a look. We have this guy right here, 4x squared minus 9. Which one are we going to use for this? The difference, okay, of squares. How did I know that? Okay, this is the thing. You have to know how to identify. The way we know that is because every term is a perfect square, right? There's every term is a perfect square. Square. I'm just going to use a square symbol there. In addition to that, that's a negative, okay, or a minus sign, and it has a difference. So there's a minus sign. If it was a plus sign, then it wouldn't be the difference of squares. So it has to have a minus sign, and every single term has to be a perfect square. When it's like that, when I'm doing difference of squares, you just set up your two um, parentheses. You put a plus in one and a minus in the other. So what you fill in here is you take the square root of each of these. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of x squared is x, and I fill it in for both of these. Okay? And then what I do is take the square root of 9, which is right here, which is 3, and I fill it in for each of these. And that's it. It's 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. All right? Once again, it's very important that you know how to identify them. Every term is a perfect square, and there's a minus sign. Number 3, what kind of factoring are we going to use here? That's right. This is a quadratic. Okay? We're going to use quadratic factoring here. How did I know this? Okay. The big thing here, how I know that I'm going to do quadratic factoring, is that it's a trinomial. All right. When it's a trinomial, I can be pretty sure that it's quadratic factoring. A trinomial means it has three terms: one, two, three. All right. The other thing is, it has an x squared in it, okay, or a variable squared. That's what makes it a quadratic in the first place. When I do it this way, well, what we do is we write out our little x, okay. Our product has to be eight, okay, and our sum has to be negative six, okay. We just got those numbers from here and here. So our product has to be 8. We just got it from here. And our sum has to be 6. We got that from right here. All right, what are our two numbers? Let's think about this. Hmm. I know it's negative 4 and negative 2. If I multiply these together, I get positive 8. If I add them up, I get negative 6. All right? So we just set up our parentheses. All right? And we just fill in what we know. So this is going to be x minus 4, all right, and x minus 2. That is your answer. 
then the next one. Okay, this one. This is going to be special quadratic factoring. Okay, special quad factoring. How did I know this? Well, I say this a thousand times to you guys, so if you don't know by now, you kind of just suck. We know this because one, it's a trinomial, okay? And also, it has an A co coefficient. An A coefficient is the number in front of x squared. That's our A coefficient. So it has an A coefficient. I know, someone right now is thinking, why is it an A coefficient? Well, if you remember, the general way we write a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. This is the standard form of a quadratic and the a is always what's in front of x squared. So we have an a coefficient in this, we have to use special quadratics. How do we do special quadratics? Well, this is probably one of the more tricky ones. Well, we start off with our x and we get our product has to be whatever the a times the c is. Okay, we're going to multiply a and c and this is negative 30. So the product has to be negative 30 and our sum stays the same. That's still going to be 7. Okay, that our middle term. Do, do, do. Okay? It's still this. All right, we think about this for a second. Now, let me see. Negative 30 and 7. What are two numbers we can get to do that? Um, got it. Okay, let's go with positive 10 and negative 3. All right, when I multiply these together, I get negative 30. When I add them up, I get positive 7. Now, from here, I just don't go like, you know, x plus 10 and x minus 3. That is wrong. Don't be that person. Okay, that is not the way to do this. Oh, 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 where's my erase function? Oh. All right. That is not the way to do this, guys. What you want to do is... You want to split your 7 into these two numbers, okay? So it's we bring down our 2x squared. So it's 2x squared plus 10x, all right? We're splitting 7 into these two numbers, minus 3x, minus 15. Remember, if I just added 10x and negative 3x, I would get back to 7x. So I didn't really change anything here. I just split into two terms. The next thing we do is factor by grouping. So I'm going to group the first two terms and the second two terms. I take out the GCF here. We just learned about that. The Greek GCF is 2x. So this becomes x plus 5. I take out the GCF here. That is a negative 3. And that's just x plus 5 again. And I bring everything together. So I bring my outside terms, 2x and minus 3, together. So I get 2x minus 3 and x plus 5. That's it. That's how you factor these. The big thing here is splitting. If you could split, just do factor by grouping and you're good to go. All right, final kind of factor we're going to learn about. This is grouping. Okay? How did I know it was a grouping question? Well, because you know it's grouping when you have four terms. Okay? There's four terms here. That's how I know to use grouping here. One, two, three, four. When there's four terms, we use grouping. Now, grouping, all we have to do is like we did in the last problem, where we group some stuff together. So we take the first two terms, we group those together, and we take the second two terms, we group those together. We find out what our GCF is here. Well, if I'm looking at these, I see n squared is a common factor. There's two n's in both of those. That leaves me with 3n. When I factor that out, minus 4. I'm looking at these two guys. They have a common factor of 3. So I'm going to factor out a 3 from these guys. And that leaves me with, oh, look at that, n min 3n minus 4. These will always be the same, by the way. Always. If you're doing your grouping right. Now we just take our outside terms now. This guy and this guy, we bring them together. So it's n squared plus 3 and 3n minus 4. That is our answer, and we are done. All right, kids, remember, before you go to sleep, it's always good to do 50 crunches. It keeps your stomach tight, and it burns a few calories.